Hi, this is Trev. Welcome to my blog. I've been sent this welding helmet to do a review on. Company Ginor, Ginauer, Ginauer. Is it gin o'clock yet? Anyway, he sent me this mask free of charge, which was nice, uh, for me to do a review on. It's not a paid sponsorship or anything silly like that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through the unboxing, the controls, the headband. Does it work well as a welding helmet? Would be quite useful to know that. So hope you enjoy the video. Just one day after I agreed to do this product review, a parcel arrived from Amazon and here it is. Got some specifications on the side. I'll just have a read through those before I open it up. So there's the optical rating. Viewing area, quite important this really. 100 by 67 millimeters. The 67 is gonna be the height. So the higher that number when you're looking at a mask spec, the higher the height is gonna be on the viewing area. And that's gonna be a standard 100 mil width. Sensors four. That's good, so we've got plenty of sensors on the front that are gonna pick up an arc and trigger the mask to actually dim down, you see? So the more sensors you've got, the more chance that arc is gonna hit one of those sensors. Light shade three, so that's gonna be for grinding, I would assume, not having opened it up yet. Uh, dark shade, so we've got five to nine, nine to 13, so nine to 13 is gonna be a standard MIG weld, TIG weld, art weld, etc. 9 to 13, pretty standard. You got your UV protection rating there. Uh, how, how quickly it's triggered, look. So 0 0.04 milliseconds, I assume that means shade control inside and stepless. Stepless, so it's going to be a dial. It's not going to be notches on that dial, so it's not going to go 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. It's going to be a variable control without any steps on it, which is good because you could just back it off slightly if you wanted to, or just turn it up slightly. So sensitivity and delay, these are pretty good functions. These are pretty standard on reasonable masks now. So sensitivity, obviously, how sensitive it is to trigger and when you start welding. Delay can be quite good, especially if you've got something where it's being triggered to say that you're not welding anymore and you can turn the delay up and overcome that. So that can be quite helpful as well. TIG rated, amps rated, uh, grind mode. Yes, see, grind mode, I thought it would have because we've got a number three up there. Uh, material helmet, nylon, weight. Actually, the box does feel remarkably light, so that's a good indication that the mask's gonna be very light, of course. Operating temperature, right, let's get on and open it up and have a look to see what we got inside. So what do we have? First thing, noticed some screen protectors, lens covers, whatever you want to call them. Seem to have a few in there. The mask itself. Some sort of warranty card, more protectors, and an instruction manual. Might pay to read that before I start looking at the mask. Normally do it the other way around, don't we? A bit more packaging. That's it, that's what's in there. These are gonna be the important ones. These are gonna go on the outside, of course. So we've got one, two, three. So we've got five in total. I'm assuming there's already one on the mask. So that's pretty good. Got this kind of panoramic thing going on. Um, let's get the protector off the outside. Ooh, shiny, shiny. The protection off the inside as well. So that just peels out ever so easy. I'll zoom in on everything. We can have a close-up inspection before I start 
welding it and adjusting it and stuff. Need to work this head strap out as well first. Always worth spending, I think, plenty of time getting it fitting on your head right. Especially if you wear glasses or something, because you can normally sort of adjust these things backwards or forwards. So if you want to wear glasses, sometimes they hit, don't they, on the inside. It looks like there's plenty of adjustment each and every way on this, so that's quite nice. First things first, need to get the head strap fitted first. So let's have a look at the head strap, see what kind of adjustment we've got. So it's just a basic turn affair. So turn that dial, makes it larger. And it's got this nice kind of ratchet going on to stop, of course, the tension of your head unwinding it. So that's what that ratchet's for. It's quite nice, isn't it? It's quite, it's quite well made. There's a bit of padding in there as well. That's for your forehead to sit against. And that's where your quiff goes through there. Look. Very nice. On both sides of the mask, roughly where your ears would sit, I suppose, there's these adjustment dials. Now these adjustment dials have got a serrated plastic washer inside, so you can hear it clicking. Now, the point of this is, is you get it so that you can lift the mask up and the mask will stay up because it's locked against those serrated washers. You can let go of the mask and it's just not gonna flop down straight into your face. Then if you wanna ease it off a little bit, you can ease it off. So that's what that's for. Inside of here, there's like a, a little green button that you can depress. So when I depress that green button, so press it in, that adjusts the head strap in or out. So basically that can bring your face closer to the screen or further away. If you were wearing glasses, for example, you might want to be a bit further away. There are two top strap adjusters. So these straps go across the top of your head. There's two of these so that you can adjust it so that it's perfect. Uh, these couldn't be any easier. You just press that button out like that, so that just clicks out. If you want to make it larger, you can just reel it out a little bit, snap it back together again. Obviously the other way around if you want to make it shorter. And there are two of these straps. What these straps will do is make the helmet higher or lower on your head. So obviously if they're too tight, then you're going to be looking at the lower of the screen. And if they're too loose, you're going to be looking at the very top of the screen, so you want to adjust these so that your eyes are somewhere fairly central to the screen. Another adjustment you have is a stop adjustment. What this does is this stops the mask from coming down and hitting you in the face. So if you had your side dials unwound and you allowed the mask just to flop down, the mask will sit just away from your face. If it does happen to touch your face, then you can simply press this little clip in and then move this lever. So this lever's got like little teeth in it and it will just move it to another section of the teeth. And that just adjusts the stop so that the mask doesn't actually rest on your face, it just rests away. On the forehead strap, you've also got adjustment there. So you've got small, medium and large, and you can just pop those out of there and adjust the diameter of the strap. The welding mask's parameters can be set via the control panel, which is inside the mask. So we're looking at the control panel now, you look inside the mask, this is what you will see. So let's start from this side. So we've got a sliding switch here, slides that way and that way. And what this does is this tells this dial here which setting to be on. Really clever this because what we've got is we got from shade number five to number nine, number nine to number 13. So nine to 13 will be your typical safe shades. This shade side here, so five to nine, it's particularly useful if you're doing some very, very low power TIG welding. So say you're welding at about 20 amps or maybe even lower than that, this setting here could be very useful. Uh, you know, shade number eight, you can see a lot, lot more when you're doing low power TIG welding than you can do shade number nine, but you don't want to turn it down too low because you still want to protect your eyes. So just bear that in mind. It's really clever because what this switch does is it changes the parameters of this dial. So this dial here 
is the shade dial. So this is completely stepless. See, there's no no notchiness going on there. So that will that will select. That would be on five now. Let so that would be five there all the way around would be to nine and then if we switch it over it will go from nine all the way up to 13. Now this is particularly brilliant because it really really increases the usability of this tile because it's not overly sensitive. If it was selecting five to 13 in one turn then you'd only have to breathe on that dial and it would radically change the shade. It also gives you a safer side, if you know what I'm saying, because 9 to 13 is typically your safer side. Uh, 5 to 9, you're in territory where you could actually not have enough protection in place. So just bear that in mind. So sensitivity up here, I'm going to show you a quick demonstration of going outside and the mask being triggered by the sunlight and what you can do then is just turn the sensitivity down because you really what you want is you want the sensitivity as high as it will go but without falsely triggering if you can understand what I'm saying because you want that mask really responsive so the greater the sensitivity is the more likelihood it's going to be triggered faster by a change in light but you don't want it so sensitive that sunlight sets it off. So really, really good feature this. You can turn the sensitivity down if you're outside and it's being triggered by the sunlight. You just literally turn the sensitivity down so that it's not triggered by the sunlight. Then you'll be able to weld outside. Or if there's sun coming through a skylight or something that could be particularly useful for. Again, this is stepless. Again, the delay is stepless and variable as well. So the delay is the amount of time it takes to go from dark to clear. So you might think that, well, I don't want there to be any delay, so I'm gonna turn it right down. Now, the thing is, the delay can be quite useful if it's not detecting an arc quick enough. So you end up getting flashed. So you're welding and every now and then you may get flashed. If this scenario happens, then turning up the delay may help cure this problem. But just bear in mind, it will take longer to go from dark to light when you have the delay higher. Over here, we have a grind stroke weld function. I would just ignore this altogether because this mask can be used also as a grinding mask. And from what I can see, it's just an on off switch. So if you've got it set to grind, the mask no longer does anything because when you look through the mask, it's already got protection built in through the actual mask itself. It's already on shade number three, which is not much at all. You can clearly see the world around you. And so you can use it as a grinding shield. I wouldn't use it as a grinding shield. You're just going to ruin a completely good mask. Just get yourself a good pair of goggles or a proper grinding shield. Don't use your welding mask as a grinding shield and just use it as a welder. Low battery warning indicator. This does take batteries as well as being solar powered. Batteries in welding masks last normally for the lifetime of the mask unless you really, really take good care of it. You may then have to replace the batteries, but we're talking a long, long time. So with the head strap fitted really well, put the mask on. This is the view I've got out of the mask. So I've got the camera inside the mask and I'm walking around my workshop. I can see extremely well. The mask is ready for use because it just automatically activates as soon as you start welding. So this is the view you will have when you are not welding. Might not sound very important, but I believe that the view while you're not welding is almost as important as the view when you are because you need to be able to position yourself. And if you can see really, really well, then this is vitally important. You haven't got to keep raising and lowering that mask because you can't see what you're looking at. So in this video, I'm just showing you me striking an arc up on a bit of scrap metal just to show the view through the mask. One thing I'd like to add that there is far more clarity when you're actually looking through the mask with your eyes 
as opposed to what the camera is showing you. The camera seems to lose a lot of detail. I cannot focus on the actual point I want to and this is probably the best shot I could get. MIG welding, as you can see it's pretty good as well on MIG welding. It does have this characteristic that most welding masks have and that is if you do a long bead of MIG weld and you stop welding the arc disappears the mask thinks right they've stopped welding i'll turn the mask off they turn the mask off then i think what's happening is is it picks up the glow of the bead and shuts the mask down again to protect your eyes as i said this is very characteristic of most masks that i've used so this would be a good point to wind the delay up if you were getting a false triggering from the glow off the bead, turn the delay up a little bit and then you're not going to get that kind of double flash where the arc disappears so instantly it goes to clear then it picks up on the glow off the bead and then goes dim again. You'll miss that momentary flash that you get by just winding the delay up a little bit. The mask would appear to have the facility to clip in a magnifier or cheetah lens as sometimes referred to as when you need to wear reading glasses to be able to see what you're doing you can buy a lens the same magnification and clip it into the mask allowing you to dispense with your reading glasses oh thanks very much for watching i really hope you enjoyed that review i will have many more reviews of tools and products in the future coming up when i was first approached by this company I did ask them for a link on the mask so I could check the mask out because my big fear was it was going to be the cheapest mask available on eBay and you can buy masks on eBay for under £20 now and to be honest with you they do the job they work they're the ones with the big dial on the side but so many of those around now it'd be a pointless exercise I want to do reviews on some that are a bit more special than the absolute budget you can buy but this still is very much a budget mask but this stands head and shoulders above that for the build quality if you understand what I'm saying. So this comes in at around about £50. They have said for a limited time they're going to give me a product code that will be in the video description along with a link to the helmet so you'll be able to get yourself a bit of extra dosh off that. So in summing up, I think I've summed up everything I needed to sum up already, haven't I? Have I got anything negative to say? Yes, the instructions are absolute rubbish. But hey, you've got this video to fall back on so hopefully that covers all bases. Anything else to add? Yes, the longevity of this mask. I've only used this mask for the duration of this video. So just bear that in mind. It hasn't withstood the rigours of weeks of welding for me to kind of give you a long-term view. So just bear that in mind. Anything else? Jeepers, creepers. Where'd you get those weepers? Peep show, creep show. Where did you get those eyes? Anyway. I'll be back with another video shortly. And until then, bye for now.